All right, welcome to WSQ number five. Today we're going to talk about reflection and refraction, a couple of really important concepts to understand as we move forward in our class this year. We're going to learn what the law of reflection states today. We're also going to learn why light rays bend when they enter a new medium at an angle. And we're going to learn what determines the types of images that are formed by different types of lenses and mirrors. And so I'm going to tell you right now, this is going to be some uh, stuff that's hard to understand at first glance but we're going to keep working on it and get some practice and do things in class to help us uh, understand these concepts. So first of all we have to understand what reflection is. When an object or a wave hits a surface through which it cannot pass it bounces back and the bouncing back of a object or a wave is called reflection. Um, you know we get this uh, in sports a lot of times we'll talk about you know, in hockey, for example, if a, if a, a hockey player um, shoots at the goal and the goalie stops it and the puck bounces off of the goalie, we call that a deflection. Okay, it's a defensive reflection, basically. Okay, um, but a lot of times you'll hear about reflection, okay, uh, a ball being reflected. Okay, and that means it bounces off of a surface it can't pass through. Now, what's important to understand is we notice and look here is that we're going to have a variety of, of um, n different terms to understand. Uh, there's actually this one little dotted line right here. Okay, We always call this the normal. Um, besides the normal, sometimes they'll also refer to this as the um, optical axis on a mirror. Um, but it's just this, this line that's perpendicular to the surface. So if the surface is flat, the normal is perpendicular to that surface. So I've had, let's say the sun's up here and it's shining down. I know it's a gray sun. As that wave comes from the sun, the incoming wave is what we call an angle of incidence. And then that wave would hit the surface which it cannot get through and it will reflect. It will reflect on what's known as the angle of reflection. So we have an incoming wave and a reflected wave. And what's interesting to note is that this angle right here, let's say this angle is 45 degrees, the angle of incidence, then the angle of reflection would also be 45 degrees. Whatever the angle of incidence is, the angle of reflection is equal. That is the law of reflection. Okay, So the law of reflection stating that the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. And so that allows us to, to realize that these two items, incidence and reflection, work together. So let's give you another example. Let's say it was 30 degrees of the angle of incidence, then the angle of reflection would also be 30 degrees. If it was 25, it would be 25. So they're always equal. And why that's important is that notes how objects bounce and reflect at a very given way. This is why in basketball, for example, you can learn how to shoot off of the backboard and have a lot of consistency once you learn your angles and how things hit. Now, that being said, that's going to take us into a set of information on different types of mirrors. There's basically three types of mirrors that we're going to deal with. Plane mirrors, convex, and concave mirrors. The first example is a plane mirror. A plane mirror is a flat mirror that produces a virtual image. Okay, and the uh, virtual image is just an upright image that's the same size, but it's reversed. Um, as you see me down here in the corner, if I raise my right hand, okay, from your perspective, it may appear that I'm raising my left hand, even though in reality this is my right hand in this case. Now, um, it looks a little bit different because in our example, we're not dealing with a mirror, we're dealing with a camera that flips the image. Okay. In a traditional plane mirror, if I raise this hand, the same hand on the same hide, uh, side raises, and it looks as though I'm raising the opposite hand. Okay, That's a virtual image. It's the same size, it's upright, it looks good, but it's actually flipped. It's reversed. And um, as we see down here in this little example down here, you've got this, um, I guess it's detergent, this box of detergent that's sitting in front of a mirror Okay, that's a mirror that's a hinged mirror. It's got two different mirrors side by side. And you can see that we can actually see, not all, but at least um, three different sides to that mirror by using the law of reflection. Okay, so the light's being reflected. You can see, for example, that this image right here is being reflected there. Okay, and this side right here is being reflected to there. 
And then what's so cool is we can also see that this side, after being reflected here, is reflected back over here, and this side's reflected back over here. So we can actually see the room around us just by using this mirror, noticing that what happened, this side has been swapped, right? It looks backwards, and this looks backwards because of the plane mirror. The second type of mirror are concave mirrors. A concave mirror is a mirror with a surface that curves inward, like the inside of a bowl. Okay, think of it like a cave, concave. Okay, it's going to have like a, a cave, an opening to a, a cave. Notice what happens here, and this little uh, illustration shows this little animation. As light rays come in, they actually hit this, and since it's curved, the light rays don't bounce straight back, as in the case of a plane mirror, they actually converge at one point. Now the middle point is called the optical axis. This is the imaginary line that divides the mirror in half. And there's a focal point, this point right back here, at which everything merges. This is called the focal point. This is the point at which the light rays converge. So all of these light rays from here and here and here and here and everything in between converge at one point. We call that the focal point. That's also where we're going to be able to see it clearly as we learn about our eyesight later. We'll understand why that's important. So concave mirrors, you see this light converging at one point. The more curved the mirror, the closer the focal point. So if my mirror, for example, was like this, then my focal point would be closer. It'd be shorter. If the mirror is more flat, then there's less and less of a a convergent point. And if it's a plane mirror that never converges, that's why we get a virtual image. So take a look at this. This is pretty interesting. So if you have an object, and here's a, a, a concave mirror, okay, the object, if it's below, beyond the focal point, okay, so here's the object, the light travels, it hits. Now notice it's behind the focal point. The object's past the focal point. You're going to get a real reduced image. Okay, concave mirrors can form virtual images or real images. In this case, we're getting a real image, and this is because light is actually meeting. It's real because the light is actually converging into one point, and we're seeing the, the actual image. Okay, so what happens as this light bounces off, it converges, right? Light coming from here converges, and what we end up getting is this focal point. Oops, let me go back. And we produce a little image right here that's real. Okay, it's going to be upside down, and it's reduced in size, but it's a real image. So the light rays actually meet. Now notice what happens if the concave, if the the object is beyond the focal point but near it. So now we're not far away from it, but we're actually kind of close to the focal point. Notice what happens. It produces a real image. It's upside down, but now it's actually enlarged. Okay, and the reason being because as this light hits, it's going to reflect to a further point. And the light actually is going to converge back here. Lastly, if the object is closer than the focal point, so we've moved this object all the way up inside the focal point, now notice what happens. As the light comes in, it reflects off the mirror, bounces back, and what we end up getting is a virtual image. Why? Because the light's not actually meeting. Since the light rays don't actually meet, you get a virtual enlarged image. It's going to look bigger than it actually is because of the curve of the mirror. So it's cool how a concave mirror can actually form different types of images, whether they're virtual or real. And understand that um, that's in a concave mirror we're seeing that. Now in a convex mirror, it's the opposite. Convex mirror, a mirror has a surface that's curved outward. So a concave mirror would have been if the light source is over here, right? So here's our light source. In a concave mirror, the mirror would be like this. In a convex, the mirror is like that, as we see right here. The focal point in a convex mirror is actually behind the mirror because the light's not actually going to meet. Okay, It's basically imaginary. It's never going to meet back here. It's going to be reflected outwardly. So what happens in this type of mirror, let me get rid of this. In a convex mirror, you actually get a virtual reduced image no matter where the object is. And the reason why is here's my object out in front of the mirror. As the light rays hit, the produced image okay, is going to appear that it's smaller, okay, but it's going to be upright and it's going to be virtual. You'll see these types of mirrors in grocery stores. They'll put them up in the corners so that they can see around corners and you can see what other people are doing because it actually enlarges the image makes it easier. Hospitals also used to have these. I <laughs> don't know if they still do.
Okay, so those are the three different types of mirrors, plane, concave, and convex. There's a great web um, a little activity on mirrors. If you go to phschool.com and put in this web code, CGP5042, there's a really cool activity that will help you understand that. We'll probably do that in class. Moving on, so we had reflection. The second thing we want to talk about is refraction. When light enters a medium at an angle, the change in the speed causes the rays to bend or change direction. And so what we'll see is if I have light traveling through air and then it hits water, the light will actually bend. Okay, And then if it hits something else, let's say glass, the light will bend again and then back into air it will begin to get bend again. What we're seeing in this example is the classic example of just a cup with a spoon in it. If you've ever, just take a glass of water, fill it up, put a spoon in it, and look at the side, and it will look like the spoon is bent. The spoon's not actually bent. It's actually just the change in speed that causes the rays to bend and to appear, appear like that is bent. We'll show you, this is just a quick example, that um, the index of refraction, or basically saying each of these different objects bend light at a different rate. It travels at a different speed. So for example, in air, the index of refraction is 1.0. In water, as a liquid, it's 1.33. In diamond, one of the most refractory um, objects on Earth, or the most refractory, it's 2.42. That's why diamond gathers all the light and refracts it um, incredibly. So different objects actually will refract the light in different ways. Why refraction is important is because refraction helps us understand lenses. So if mirrors are a flat you know, piece of glass that has a silver coating on it that, that causes reflection, lenses are curved pieces of glass or other materials that actually are used for refraction. Okay? And so if you've ever seen a lens like a magnifying glass, why does a magnifying glass work? How come I can look through a magnifying glass and see an object enlarged? Well, how's that work? It's just a piece of glass, right? Well, the key is the shape. So in a, a, an object, the position of that object relative to our focal point, remember where those light rays meet, will determine whether a lens actually forms a real image or a virtual image. So let's give you an example down here. We have an object. It's a hammer. And we're going to look through the hammer through a lens. In this particular example, we're dealing with, oh, let me show you, a convex lens. Okay, convex lens is narrower at the ends than it is in the middle. Okay, so it's got bulbed in the, the center portion of it. In a convex lens, if as the object, as the light travels through, now notice, if the object's farther from the lens than the focal point, okay, here's the focal point and the object's behind it, then a real image will form. It'll actually flip the image and we'll get a real image, an upside down image that is, uh, that's, that's where the light actually converges, okay? In the second example, if the object is now closer to the lens and the focal point, we'll get a virtual image. We'll actually get a virtual image where it'll be flipped left to right, um, but it'll typically be a little bit larger. And so this will happen in magnifying glasses. You'll notice with the magnifying glass, as we get closer to an object and pull back, we'll see a change in that actual image. That's thus our magnifying glass example. In a concave lens, okay, we can only get virtual images because these light rays pass through and never meet. They're always going to be virtual. So no matter where I put the object, if I put it further than the focal point or closer than the focal point, those light rays are never going to converge and meet. You're never going to see the focal point, and so you'll just get a virtual image. Um, and thus, convex and concave lenses are used a lot for eyesight, we're going to talk about. There's a lens activity as well on Pearson phschool.com. If you go to CGP5042, uh, you'll see that one as well, and I would encourage you to go check those out. All right. So that is WSQ number five. Now that is just an introduction. We're going to be spending a lot of time talking about mirrors and lenses and understanding how they function and work. So if you're having some questions, that's all right. Make sure and answer this, the questions and write your summary, and I will see you at school. Bye.